ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Welcome you all with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First and foremost, I must thank the organizers, our elder sister, Flavia, Agnes, and brother Razik and others who have invited me and brought us all together for this occasion. It's a wonderful endeavor. May Allah bless you all. May God Almighty bless you all. Having said that, today's topic, I'll be talking for 600 seconds, inshallah ta'ala. because it looks good isn't it 600 seconds instead of saying 10 minutes it looks big so in case i go beyond 600 seconds please let me know because i don't know i don't know how much i'm going to speak but anyhow i'll try to wind up everything within that 600 seconds it shall well when i look at people like flavia sister flavia and others who are here i get reminded of great people in the past like i get reminded of najashi like we're just wondering why is this christian lady she so bothered about muslim and uh, muslim community and muslim women and you know calling by the name majlis and what's all this but if you were to look into the history we know the negus najashi najashi was a ruler to whom muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the last prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he sent a delegation amongst the believers amongst the muslims to seek asylum in abyssinia today's ethiopia and when he found that the muslims were talking exactly what he learned from jesus christ may peace be upon him his heart melted even so whatever we talk about islam or muslim or whatever regards to religion religion it is nothing but a continuum of what was left by the earlier prophets so in reality sharia was existing even during the time of isa isa jesus christ made his demand and before that the yahud the jews they too had their book and they were the people of the book they were given scriptures they had sharia so the sharia was as historically said it was evolving according to the times and today we have the sharia which is constant which is not going to evolve but the fiqh will evolve well that is a matter which we have a different occasion to talk about jurisprudence why am i telling you because in this forum we have to take the right understanding when the jew he committed zina when he committed adultery and he said don't judge by your book muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you bring your book we we'll look into what is there in your book this is also very much documented in the books of hadith So having said that today's topic is rights of women from the Quranic principle it's so amazing when you look at women how do men look at women when we look into the hadith we come to know from the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that adam the first man was created and he was made to live in jannah in paradise and he was made to eat from there from the best of fruits and enjoy the environment it was beautiful place but he was feeling that he's missing something in life he was wandering about he was feeling kind of depressed but allah knew what he was missing so when adam alay salam was sleeping allah subhanahu wa taala created hawa the woman from one of the ribs of adam alay salam and that delighted him This is very important thing Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said among the best of the treasures in the world the thing that man craves for the most and the best treasure that he can have or he could have is a pious woman he desires for a woman and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says this he testifies to this fact in the Quran chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 if you heard if you were to read Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says among the thing that man loves and desires for is first thing is women and then comes the rest of the things the lands and treasure gold and horses and all this stuff 
so women in islam is considered to be of great importance and when a man comes to meet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and says he wants to participate in jihad and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inquired do you have somebody old in your home amongst your parents and that man the sahabi said yes i have my mother and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said go and take care of your mother that is your jihad and he went to say in uh, he said in um, he said something like what is it in al jannata tahta rijlaiha he said verily the janna lies under the feet of your mother so mother is so very important and she is a woman and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said janna lies under the feet of your mother and then look at what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about the daughters prophet said if you were to take care of two daughters give them good education bring them up well you will find janna subhanallah paradise paradise by raising up girl children and at a time when they came to know that a girl baby is born they used to bury her alive and the quran testifies to this fact for which crime did the baby was buried in surah taqweer allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so all of these things the principles if you were to see the quran has legislated in detail as to what the importance of women is marry the women of your choice in twos threes and fours yes this is something which is allergic isn't it for a lot of women if you say marry the women of your choice in twos threes and four but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says if you cannot do justice marry only one if you cannot do justice marry only one what is justice can anybody take two wives i will tell you no it is not that easy only the one who has the strength to take care of the women physically financially emotionally only he is capable of ma- marrying another woman let me tell you from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you understand this then you are capable of having two wives if you can understand this when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was there with aisha radhiyallahu anha a person comes with a plate of food which was sent from another wife and when aisha radhiyallahu anha found that been sent from another wife he did, she i mean she did not like it and she goes and bangs at the plate to the effect that the food fell down and the plate broke into pieces what would you and i as man would do if your wife did in front of you anybody amongst us huh slap back how many of you know tamil you know only one two three i will tell you in tamil what men would say adi serpala huh adi serpala you know what does it mean i'll take this slipper and beat you up that is what it means that is naturally is there in our vocabulary sorry so that's how we say sister is also nodding yes that is the kind of emotion men are generally having you know what the prophet did he did not yell he did not get angry he did not lose his cool he went up to that the plate he took the broken parts away and he ate from that he ate from that and then he took the plates which were broken i mean the plate which was broken he took it and handed out to aisha radhiyallahu anha and said you give a fresh plate then he took that plate and handed out to the person who gave that and said go and give it to her your mother she was upset because it is her time who aisha radhiyallahu anha he is also defending his wife she has a reason to lose her he did not go against his wives none of the wives if men can display this kind of patience perseverance even if your wives are misbehaving go for two wives otherwise you are not capable of today so many beatings everything look islam is wonderful religion i don't have anything to say against it but is it being implemented that is a real question is it been implemented in darul qada is it been re- implemented at the homes lot of things are not been implemented so how are we going to keep the checkpoint how how why is it not been implemented i tell you what malcolm x said you need to demand for your rights and if the rights are not given you need to take it like a man you need to demand for your rights but if your rights are denied you need to take it like a man that was in general 
But today's time, if women can demand their rights and take it like women, you are capable of doing that. You have to demand and take it. There are many occasions, I will tell you, in Tamil Nadu, earlier people did not have much of knowledge about Sharia and all that. And people were easily coming and asking for dowry. Today, if somebody comes in the majlis and says, how much of dowry you will give, even the lady will come in the open and say, Poda. Poda. You know what is Poda? Get away. Very directly on the face she will say. You know why? She knows the law. She knows the Sharia. As long as we are in this kind of situation where we don't know the law, people can exploit. But if you know the law, no one can exploit you. So what is the thing? As Sheikh rightly said, you have to get educated. You live your life the way you want. Choose the right man. Why do you have to say like, I have to get married to anybody because I'm getting old? No. You have to think, think, looking for the right person. How many minutes have? I got three more minutes, okay. Having said that, I must also say, today many a times we see people saying like, come on, we are living in a life time where everything is easy. If, if a woman wants to have an extra marital sex, what's wrong with it? You understand? Article 4, I mean section 497 is all going to be scrapped off and all these things we are living at a time where people are having debate. I say we, we must enjoy this debate. Don't run away from the debate. Be in the debate and discuss it out. When you run away from that, it means that you, you're not equipped enough. It means that you don't have substance. Nobody can put you down. Do you think you can be put down? No. It's only when you choose to be put down, you'll be put down. If you want to stand up and with courage, you're going to stand up and say, no, it's not how it is. Explain it. People are going to hear to you. There are people who are there to be willing to hear to you. But we are so very, you know, we just give it up so easily. My point is, why is that we can't have extra marital relationship? It's a very logical question. It's a logical question. I have asked my dad when I was very young. Well, there was a time when I did not have beard. I was like totally a different kind of a person in Bangalore, raised up, going on the bikes and speeding away, all that. So that time I have asked my dad, Dad, what's wrong in drinking beer? That was my question. My dad said, it's haram. That didn't convince me. He just said, it is haram. It did not convince me because I did not have the knowledge. So I used to be in the atmosphere where everybody was there and they were drinking alcohol. I did not find anything wrong. Until when I started reading the Quran and the Quran explained why it is wrong. Why? Because you start fighting. There will be so much of enmity and you lose your honor. Have you seen people who drink and then go, come back home? They go beat up their wives. They sleep on the street. They don't know which is the bathroom place and which is the street. See, everything is misplaced when you go drunk. When you go drunk, everything is gone misplaced. The inhibitory senses do, does not work anymore. Everything is okay for you. People go slapping around, people cry around, people laugh around, people talk about all their emotions out. Everything happens because you are losing your honor there. You start fighting. So there is a reason behind everything. Similarly, when a woman is asked to guard her modesty, cover her, herself, it is very simple. When she is covering her beauty, she is not going to attract unwanted people. That's it, simple. Nothing beyond that. You are so beautiful that we don't want you to be a, a center of attraction for a lot of men. As long as you are going to cover yourself with modesty, your gestures are full of modesty. And your voice, your tone, your way of looking at people, if everything is full of modesty, then you are going to safeguard yourself. But what happens if you are not going to follow the way of the Lord, what happens? We are giving ways for people to exploit. And then we cry, why is this me too is happening today? We are crying today. Why is this me too happening? I'm telling you, I'll just finish in one minute. I'm telling you, if the Sharia is being 100% implemented on a personal life, me too cannot happen. It cannot happen. Why? Because the Prophet said, do not sit with a woman in, seclitude, in uh, solitude, in seclusion. Do not sit with a woman in seclusion. Because the third one who is going to be there is Shaitan. Even if I am having very good intentions, very wonderful intentions, but somehow you are caught up in a place, you and a man and a woman, and there is rain and there is no power, there is no electricity. Do you think everything is going to be the same? 
No, I don't think so. We've been watching a lot of movies, isn't it? Even in movies, they don't say lies. They say the fact even in movies. It doesn't work that way. Unless until you have a reason to. And today, nothing is wrong. Come on, one night stand, it's okay, fine. That's what we can. We come to that point. But you know why it is wrong? One night stand is not right. Because you're going to break lineage. The child who's going to be born, going to be born without a father's name. And you and I know, if a person does not know the father's name, and you can't register in the paper, in the book, in the school, and somebody is going to call him with a name, that's going to be really make him an anti-social element that is recorded. It is recorded. It's not a joke. So there are many other wonderful things. I don't want to take much of your time. I just want to thank you all and let you all with one very important thing. A lot of things have been done in the name of Islam today. You have a choice to practice what you want. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody can force you. If you think this is not correct, you can always raise your voice. And you have to demand, you have to take your rights. We can't say like, oh men, give us the rights. Don't. It's Allah who has given you rights already. Don't demand from men. Waqiru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.